Welcome everybody to I the Serpent Tarot for another pick a card reading. Today's reading is all about identifying your particular spiritual gifts and abilities in terms of your personal discernment. So what I mean by that is how you process information that comes to you to some degree in the 3D and through your mind and so forth in terms of critical thinking. But we're going to be looking far more at also the the senses that come to you, the information that comes to you, the knowing that comes to you from a more spiritual connection, you know, to your guides, to the divine, to whatever sort of energies, and, and even potentially, depending on what comes up, what sort of divinity tools you might use, that sort of thing. So the inspiration for doing this reading was that it does seem to me that just like in our bodies, in our musculature, for instance, some of us might have particular skills for particular types of sports or particular physical activities. And maybe also we have some weaknesses <laughs> where we can't do certain things. Uh, and equally the same thing with different ways that we could learn, the different learning modalities and so forth. We have both our kit bag of strengths and that we can work from, but we also need to calibrate, particularly when we're talking about discernment, with understanding what our blind spots might be. Because... We live in an increasingly divided world, a world where whether it's done by design or not, we get fed information through algorithms that, that if we're not careful could just serve our confirmation bias rather than allowing us to develop and keep the critical thinking muscles going and so forth by exposing ourselves to different forms of information, different viewpoints and so forth and finding you know, what actually does seem to resonate most once you've sort of seen what is fully available and so forth. And this certainly exists in the spiritual world as well. I have certainly come across a number of sites on YouTube, for instance, that might do something like political tarot, and they have very different belief structures and ideologies that they start from. And so they come up with very, very different prognostications about what is going to happen politically. And it's hard to discern when you look at that which one might be right and how much it's being channeled through not just spiritual things but also through the belief structures of the person concerned. And I'm not saying that as a criticism. I'm saying it, it's true of all of us that we need to be aware that sometimes even when we are spiritually gifted, something that comes to us may either be actually coming from within us rather than from some sort of channeling and may reflect something that we haven't consciously worked through. Or if we don't have the right protections up, it could be coming from a source that's not meaning us well or is trying to trick us or beguile us. So I think it's important to understand both strengths and also blind spots around this and to work on building the strengths, but to almost double check to to kind of make up for and, and to sort of course correct if you need around blind spots. So how the reading will be structured is it will start off with looking at what your kit bag is, what it, where you have most strengths in relation to all the different senses and spiritual connections and so forth. And it could pick up your spiritual background in other lives. It could pick up anything. We'll see, we'll see what energies are around. Then we're going to look at how that manifests in the material world for you now. What are the areas that spirit suggests you really start to to focus these on or build that those muscles, those spiritual muscles with. Then we're going to look at what might be the blind spot areas. Where do you really need to kind of second guess yourself and really bring all those skills to bear in a way that, that can make up for you know, a potential blind spot. And then we'll ask for general advice from spirit about building your discernment more generally. So, Hopefully that sounds of interest to you. What, as I've done it quite often recently, is that I'm using different decks for different readings and I've picked the moon card from the different decks for the different readings. So pile one has the moon card from the white fly tarot. Pile two has the moon card from the dream visions tarot. Pile three has the uh, moon card from Flights of Fantasy and Pile 4 has some moon cards from the Journey of the Sacred Bee Tarot. I'm also using the sacred symbols in case that is something that really draws you to a particular reading. So Pile 1 has Metatron, Pile 2 has the Tree of Life, Pile 3 has the Om and Pile 4 has a Pentacle or Pentagram. I'll also put the numbers down for anybody who likes those. So 1... Two, three, and four. 
I will be using these decks primarily in the reading, but I am going to use a second tarot deck, the same second tarot deck in each of these readings to look at the blind spots so that I can see if there's any synergies or similar cards coming up because that will tell me certain things as well, depending upon what happens. So that's the structure. That's what we're going to do. Hopefully either a particular tarot pack image here will draw you the sacred symbols, a number. Of course, feel free to go to more than one reading. It might be that your gifts and your blind spots are sort of scattered across a couple of readings, given this is a collective reading. And more than anything, and I would say this often in my readings, and I hope that it's, it's taken as, as just a general truth when I don't say it, these are collective readings, so you need to use your discernment about what is resonating for you and what isn't. And if you find yourself in a reading and you're feeling that really doesn't feel like me, it might be worth checking out another one in case it just wasn't the right connection making the choice of the reading. So use your discernment first and foremost for this message to make sure that it is something that truly resonates for you. And then from there, hopefully the guidance that comes with it will be helpful. So. If you need to pause the video to determine which reading you want to go to or readings, by all means do that. Do whatever you do to choose a reading or readings and when you have, I'll see you there. Welcome part one to your reading. So this is, as I talked about in the introduction, a bit of a map of where I think your skills are, your main strengths are at the moment. And as I say, we'll look at how they manifest in the material world, where your blind spots might be and some advice from Spirit as we go along. And I have to say, it's very interesting, this straight out the gate for the first reading I'm doing, because it really, it's really going to need to be quite nuanced, I think, this reading, because in a way, you, because you have the card look, I might not be pronouncing that right, but that is a god of skill. The story about him is that he had, in a sense, all the skills. He went to a particular city, he wanted to enter the city, uh, he was told he could only do it if he had a particular skill. So he said one of his skills and they said, oh, we've already got that. And then he said another and we said, oh, we've already got that. Went through quite a number of skills and then eventually he said, ah, but you have somebody who has everything. And they had to admit, no, they didn't. And therefore he gained entry. So there is something about you. And I think it's also, I was using the first cards here from the tarot deck that you chose to get a sense about some of the energies around your particular skills, your particular discernment skills. And we have all major arcana. So that also suggests to me someone who's very highly developed in this area, as does the Master Path 11, because this is the visionary. But there is something interesting about the ruling planet being Uranus and sacrifice here that I will get to, because I think that within the seeds of your strengths, which are multitudinous in this area is also the seeds of the potential weakness. So this is the thing to maybe focus on. And I think this is what spirit will probably tell us more about as we go through here, because it's like the person, the child at school who is talented at everything. Sometimes they don't ultimately manifest and you're meant to manifest in this life with life path A because they can do everything. The choice of what to do and where to put their energy is, is the hard thing. So, but I do think that Spirit's given us some clues here about out of all the various skills that you have, I think you would have to one degree or another all the different clear senses. It's just which ones may be strongest in you and which ones are most meant to be used in this life to create the sort of transformative energy you're meant to be here to do and the healing energy with both Bridget, who is a goddess of healing, and the healing energy here. So... What I think in terms of what spirits hints to us around your key senses, where your discernment is strongest and best, or where you would be best using that energy to then bring about what you are meant to bring about in this world. Firstly, I think there's a very strong emphasis on all the senses, all the clear senses that I would almost call earthy, that, that are about the body and the feeling senses in that way. So with Bridget for healing, with the Empress, which always feels to me like Demeter, from a sort of Roman and Greek mythology, the sort of earthy, grounded, abundant sort of energy, very much in the 3D, very much in the physical. There is clear sentience, which is feeling things literally in the body. And I think you are definitely someone who would do that. I think that if you get a gut instinct, if something makes you feel a bit ill before somebody phones you up and, you, and so forth, these are all signs your body is telling you how to discern something. If, if something feels uneasy physically, I think it's probably... Although you can pick up things on all the levels, I think it's probably the most 
developed and the most accurate. Like if everything else seems fine and you think that you're channeling some information because you are so connected to potentially the underworld as well, you have to be aware you could channel stuff that's not to your interest. But if you don't feel good about it, and if you don't think it's an energy that is healing to you and to others, that is abundant and about growth, then I feel that will start to tell you that is a very good sign from your discernment that something is an issue. There's also, you have a very strong sense, I think, around the power of the world and almost the sort of philosophy of the world with the emperor there and with the hermit, and also with the visionary element there. So things like clairvoyance and clairaudience or claircognizance, so that, that sense of less knowing, and I do think the knowing filters through the body, that's your that's your real way of working it out, but there is, there is information that's channeled to you definitely. But I do feel that because you are powerful and because Uranus is here and there's something transformative about you and what you're meant to do in this life, and it is meant to manifest something really different, that there is a possibility that you could get drawn into energies that were more negative. So again, go back to your what your body is telling you about that. There's no doubt that you're getting the energy, but it could be that you sometimes channel stuff that isn't to your benefit. Very important to think about things like protective rituals or spells or, or or prayers or whatever particular thing works for you there because you very much are a channel for that sort of thing and you are very much able to filter things sort of spiritually and get information directly spiritually. The other thing that this is saying to me, there's the healing side, the body, how you how you manifest all of that and how you use that maybe to transform yourself and others and towards a, a sort of more healthy lifestyle or a more healthy approach to relationships or whatever it might be. There's also a creative instinct here, which I think is connecting to the hermit, connecting to the visionary and so forth. And so I think that it is saying that that through writing, through being authorship in some way, you can channel that. And it's almost like it's a stress test for it. So if you start to get information that isn't coming so much from your senses, is coming you know, in terms of physical senses, but it's coming more from what appears to be channeled information or more from your mind, try writing it down. Because if you can't write it in some way, like write it as a, a poem, as a set of sort of dot points, as a a short story, whatever works for you. You don't have to be an author in the broad sense, but if it doesn't make sense to you when you write it down, then I think that's also a way to work through whether or not the information is the right information for you. And and it's probably also suggesting here, because you are here to be very transformative, but you will be drawn into energy sometimes that are more about the powers of the world and the manipulation of the world, because I think it's almost like your energy attracts that. It's sort of like a bit of a light beacon to it. Maybe really looking at the authors within this space and really assessing it and using your critical thinking. So using more of a kind of a 3D sense to stress test as well as what your body is telling you. But you are definitely a natural healer. You're definitely sort of someone who has those senses, particularly in the body, but you kind of have them at all levels with that card. So it really is finding the ones that work best for you but I do think that spirit is saying here that because of the fact that you are here to do some major change for the world or for yourself or for those close to you or something like that and there's a lot of very powerful energy and I'd say past lives that you're bringing into play with three major arcana there it is important that you go to the strongest barometer which is that side of you that is around the senses in some way. So if you don't relate to that, if you don't feel like you've got kind of all of them, but but you can really feel it in your body in various ways and so forth, then you may have picked the wrong potential reading here. Or it may be that you just actually haven't really understood that about yourself. It might be that you could get stuck a bit like, as I say, the, the kid at school who can do everything, you get a bit stuck because you can do everything so you don't really know where to focus. So I think Spirit is telling you, focus on the bodily side of things primarily to get your your discernment to be your stress test on something and or on communicating writing it in some way and seeing whether it still holds true and that you feel that it is messages that are meant to come and are coming from the right sources because you definitely will be getting messages from the right sources and you definitely are a visionary but you are also someone who probably would attract the attention of more lower vibrational energies as well too because you were so skilled and so you taking their message forward would be a, you know, a real feather in their cap, so to speak. Okay, so 
That's interesting. You've got a bit of a mission, I think, Pile 1. And as I say, it was straight out the gate to get that card around this particular type of reading is very, very interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the white fly tarot more here. And the first thing we're going to ask, or actually what we're going to ask now with that, because then we'll use the other tarot, is what areas of your life is it particularly important for you to develop these skills, these abilities, or to use these discernment powers in at the moment and why? Okay, so there's a few things that jump out here to me. Firstly, it could be around some form of teaching, either teaching that you're getting, possibly this is the connection to the author, or you may in fact be as a master here, a teacher, you are meant to be using some of these skills and this healing and so forth to teach people, other people about this. But it's somewhere in the development, the areas of the development of a skill. And it's very interesting because you have all these skills, you have done it before. So I do feel many of the people who come here, part of the use of your discernment will be able to either teach others or to guide people towards the best teachers, the best areas and so forth, and guide them away from where things could, could not be what they appear or, or are not as well thought out or not as well developed. So there's something there and it's potentially very material. I do think it is saying that for some of you, this is something you could do as some form of a career. You could be a teacher or, or work within these sort of areas and again potentially particularly with pentacles because that's very earthy around healing around energy work that has a kind of physical outcome or a very material outcome in some way certainly your strength is is being acknowledged again by spirit here and it is it is saying it is right for you to go towards where your strengths are Again, because you're multi-talented and you are connected a lot to the divine, you might feel like you need to spread yourself really thin. But I think Spirit is saying, no, it is actually really good to concentrate where the strength really is out of all of this. Like having got through the door, so to speak, like look did by the fact that you are multi-talented, then focus where you can best use your skills. Because as I say, you are meant to transform something, yourself or others. There's something with Uranus, again, there that's very revolutionary about you and very inspirational with the Page of Wands. So this, I think, is connecting to the authorship. I think it's just spirit tipping its hat towards creative outlets in some way. There's something creative about what you do. And certainly when we get the pages in, in, any, in any deck, it's kind of where we've developed a skill to a particular level because we've gone through one to ten. So again, that fits with, with you having you know, a variety of skills to, to de decide. But it is really saying where you really enjoy it, where you have a passion, where you're inspired is, is where to, to focus it. So if you're feeling, look, yes, I'm happy to do stuff around the physical and I definitely use that as my discernment. I definitely can work out. I can just feel it in my bones whether something is right or not. But I really want to do something different. You know, I want to do something political or I want to do something writing or whatever it might be or something creative that's fine that go by and again what feels exciting to you i think but what also stimulates maybe the hermit up there makes the hermit want to come out from the shadows because i don't think you're meant to be sitting in the shadows i think you can go to the underworld you can deal with the shadow really really well but i don't think you're meant to be in the shadows you're meant with the eight of wands to be flying free and again that's a very creative sort of feeling car that sort of fast moving energy the fact that you have so many skills in your kit bag is one of the reasons why you can move really fast but it does look like things can sometimes drain your energy and make you give up one of the risks that you have i think that spirit wants to talk to you about now and this is why it's saying focus on your strengths and where you really want to develop your skills even further to bring them into bearing to to transform yourself and others is that it is easy when you have lots of skills to just sort of give up because you can do something for a while and then it can be, well, you know, it's not quite going as fast as I would like because I think you'd like things to go fast. And so, oh, well, that one isn't working. I'll just move on. Uh, and, and it is, I, I in fact often say to, to people I know that, you know, one of the things that can happen when you self-actualize in something in your life and you can go, okay, you know, I'm, I know I'm good at that. You can feel quite comfortable to try a lot of things out and if they don't work out, 
move on. And there's nothing really wrong with that because you've already self-actualized, you know, you know that you are able and, and competent and you will know this about yourself spiritually and otherwise. But but you, it almost gives you the license to sort of try things and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't affect your ego too much. I think Spirit is saying here that don't let that risk distract you. It's, it's, and it'll be interesting to see what we get with blind spots because my feeling right from the beginning of this is that your biggest challenge is sticking the course with the thing that really matters to you because there's so many different pathways you can go down. So really developing the skills even further, working to your strengths, and I think maybe teaching others in some way is a way to ground that. And I think you do have the capacity to ground it in your body and to use your discernment to do that. So when you are trying to decide with your own discernment whether you're called to something new, the next shiny thing is the thing to do, or whether you should be finishing what you're working on, go into what you feel within your body because it's it's your most accurate thing. And if it's if it is a calling to something else because the divine is calling on you for something else, then you will feel it in your body. It, but if that feels a little bit kind of depleted in energy or it feels a bit like you've kind of given up on something at the at the last minute then that's your body telling you no like put that thing aside you can do it later there's plenty of time let's just get this thing done okay so let's have a look using the rebirth tarot at what your blind spots may be i think we've already picked up a little bit of it in the sense that because of the level of your skill and the diversity of your skill you've got a challenge anyway pile one but let's let's see what where the real blind spots could potentially be this one wanted to come out so well, that's interesting because we had that with the other one. Okay, so I think Spirit's being pretty clear about this and it is picking up some of what I was talking about here, I think. Firstly, it's interesting that a blind spot is the Eight of Wands when Eight of Wands is part of what you're dealing with at the moment in the material world. I think what that's telling me is that for many of you, because you've developed your skills to such a level, there are many opportunities opening up for you now or potentially about to open up for you. And so Spirit is saying a blind spot for your discernment could be getting excited about every shiny thing. As I said, like, oh, here's another opportunity. Here's another opportunity. And because you actually do have skills in your kit bag, you run with it. But what that does is that it depletes some of the sort of manifestation energy. And it's almost as though you then don't commit to anything. You kind of go, I, I don't necessarily want to make a decision on my own. And you're almost looking for other sources, so divine sources and other people's opinions or whatever, because it's hard for you to make a decision because there's so many opportunities for you. And you haven't yet really worked out what would make you happy. What What is it you really want to build? That's why you kind of give things up. So Spirit is saying that that you, are, you have the classic challenge of the multi-talented. And this is true in the spiritual world as much as anything else. And I suspect you're probably skilled within 3D type skills as well. So <laughs> you're doubly challenged by that. But there is definitely a sense here that the, the key thing that's going on in the world at the moment that is triggering your blind spot is the speed with which you want to move to making decisions. And they make them not decisions. They, in fact, it's like appearing to make a decision, but it's almost putting everything on hold and just trying to juggle all the balls at once. So Spirit is definitely saying here that if you go to your strengths rather than that, you can do stuff on your own and you can con con connect to the right people as well too. There is a little bit of a distrust of other people here with the five of pentacles reversed. Again, that can happen with people who are you know, very, very intelligent, very, very skilled or whatever. They can start to think only on their own because they're the only one who understands. But this is definitely saying there's a strength that you can have if you understand who to connect with mo most. And it may in fact be people you teach who then become people that you eventually work with or, or have projects with and so forth. But that's just that's just a kind of a thing of like, do you do you feel like you've got to be stand on your own two feet all the time because nobody is quite at your level? There could be that could there could be a lot of truth about that in many things, but there is a blind spot about not having the connections to the right people at the right time. And certainly because you have a blind spot about deciding what it is that you really want, what is it that you really want to manifest in the world, then you could get stuck in the transformational energy, remember this, as opposed to the manifestation. So I think that spirit is basically saying that 
your blind spot is is being spoiled for choice the fact that that therefore sometimes means you don't make a choice and you try to be everything and that isn't the best way to use your discernment the best way is to go back to what you really wanted to do and what feels right and i do think for many of you this has got something to do with healing whether it's a healing practice whether it's healing others sort of therapeutically in terms of sort of relationships whether it's writing whatever it might be there is something there and in your own your spiritual barometer within your own body is so acute that it's the one that won't let you down it's the one that will be right so I think maybe with the hermit there, you tend to go into your head. Lug was very clever, even in the way he got in into this city by sort of like pointing out a different way of looking at things was that he was multi-talented is really important. And I think there is a part of you that feels here you might sacrifice your own joy for, you know, trying to be all things to all people. But Spirit is saying, don't do that. Go into, go into the discernment of your own physical feeling choose from that and commit to that and then maybe help others on that path so eventually you're not on your own but just don't and allow yourself time you know you don't have to prove you're talented you are talented <laughs> so just allow yourself time you know the masters at, at you know crafts and so forth will take their time with something because they've already proven they don't have to be in a hurry you are more self self actualized than you possibly give yourself credit for okay so part one with that, let's have a look at some energies to help you. So firstly, we're going to look at some things around astrology. Firstly, just general astrology energies around you. And then we'll use the stories oracle, which connects to different constellations to see what questions spirit thinks it worth asking, particularly around dealing with any blind spots with your discernment. But air fire and gemini okay this is interesting because that's two air energies that's why i sort of feel like you process things that's why i went back to the hermit there you process things through your intellect but as i say your body is is your most finely tuned barometer but they're interesting there it's saying that you're not naturally it's not your natural go-to because there's no earth energy there it's air and fire so creativity and what what makes sense to you intellectually is you know that you're hearing and so forth and and you definitely do with air and fire you get all those sort of clairvoyance clear cognizance clear audience maybe even um, sometimes clear salience which is the smell one where you smell a perfume and it's somebody from the other side or whatever so you've definitely got those sorts of abilities i just think that spirit wants you to focus more on the pentacle side of things the grounded energy and knowing that you have that that's partly why you're in a hurry <laughs> with the air and the fire you know you, you you just really want to move very fast and one of the things that's frustrating i think probably for you is the information coming through your body the information coming through the material the information coming through pentacles type energy it is something you're meant to do because you are meant to manifest but it's slow and you don't like slow you like transformation you like uranus that's that's exciting that's great but spirit is definitely saying that that in fact your best discernment comes through focusing on a talent and a skill you definitely have but one that maybe you don't value as much or that you externalize to healing others rather than understanding how how acute your own ability is in that area with gemini it suggests that you can juggle two things at once there's no problem with doing that and very great at communication i think that's picking up the authorship so definitely for those that that resonates too start to write down start to communicate in that way gemini is the great communicator all right i'm going to get a couple of stories oracle to see what questions and so this is a bit difficult to read the question so i will just read the question for each and then put the card down but it has a constellation and then a question and so these are questions that spirit thinks are worth you asking in some way or thinking about in some way when you're using your discernment so firstly we have cancer so that's obviously the constellation of cancer and it says what would you do for those you care for so it may be suggesting again this healing this caring this nurturing family family may be very important to you, your soul family and your actual family all of those sort of things love relationships etc maybe that's the thing that will finally make you sort of settle to to using your skills and your discernment in its most pure and precise way but certainly what would you do what how 
how do you help others, I think, is the question there. And one other question for you. We've got Corona Australis, so an Australian one. The question is, how could your life change if you stopped comparing it to someone else's? See, I think this is, this is interesting because I think this is partly the impatience we're seeing here. And I think one of the things you might find frustrating is that because you're drawn in so many directions, you're not manifesting, you're not deciding, planning and manifesting what you want. Sometimes you may feel you're behind other people who aren't as talented as you. And it's probably very true. You probably are more talented than many of them. But the thing that they may have in their favour is they have really focused on their strengths and worked with those. So again, focusing in on those things, seeing what feels right to you will probably help you in that regard so you don't have to compare yourself so much to others but to yourself and move forward that way okay so we're also going to use the wisdom of the sacred bee for just some energetic energy or energetic energy that's around you energetic information that's around you to to pay attention to and to to think about in terms of your your discernment melancholy and innovation okay so I think what that is telling us it's as I said right with the hermit and, and even some of the power stuff of the Emperor I do get the feeling that you are someone who can go into the shadow and that is a skill in and of itself and it is a way to discern there is no two ways about it I think what we're picking up here is is melancholia the sort of spiritual sort of sense of disconnection and it, I think it is shown in the blind spots with the three of cups reversed and the ace of Pentacles reversed as well too I think that there is something about understanding what is not making you happy, which is not making you feel good. Again, feeling what you feel in your body and so forth. It's, it's coming from that. And I'm getting that for some of you because your body is such a finely tuned mechanism for this sort of discernment that maybe if you haven't got the right you know, nutrition going or you're not getting enough sleep, if you're not looking after your physical vessel enough, it may be taking you into a melancholic state. And particularly if you're feeling like you should be rushing forward, forward further and getting further quicker and it's not happening and you're not really sure where to put your energies, it can take you into that. It can take you into a sort of reversal of all that energy. Whereas if you go into innovation and you allow yourself to focus on your strengths and you start to manifest something, then you can turn that around. But it is about understanding your key challenge which is that you could do so many things it's hard to choose which one so it really is about choosing why where, where do you want to innovate where excites you where within your body do you feel excited and feel a feel uprush of energy when you think about doing something that's the thing to be pursuing also going to ask for a synchronistic sign so a sign that may tell you that you are using that discernment well Time. <laughs> That's funny that time came up for you because you are impatient, you are in a hurry. But I think that time, anything to do with time, so you may be the sort of person who sees 11, 11 on a clock or, or you know, 12, 12, those sorts of things, 3, 3, 3. I think anything along those lines, and we will be rolling the, the dice to see angel numbers and angel guidance as well as part of closing out this reading. Time, time will tell you that. And if any time that your body says to, it's time to rest, then pay attention. It's time to exercise. Pay attention to that. Time is going to be, there is something about time with you, as I say, because you are in a hurry. So it's understanding how to, how to properly discern the best use of your time. You will also get, I think, when you're getting on the right path, you'll synchronistically you know, hear about you know, songs that talk about time or you'll see the time on a clock or something like that. That will be a sign synchronistically for you. Okay, so closing out the reading, part one, we're firstly going to roll the fortune dice and we'll have a look at what that tells us. So these are dice by a woman called Bobby Richardson who has her own channel around channeling and, and divine connection. So if you're interested in this, which I presume you would be if you've come to this reading, I'd recommend checking out her, her channel. So this, this is meant to just get some idea of kind of angelic and and or off-world type energy and channeling to you and, and things that you can trust, feelings that you can trust and maybe discern through your body again. Okay, so firstly, we have guidance. So it's definitely saying that you have guidance and you would have guidance because you're developed, you're very developed in this way. 
but it is also saying logic. So I think this is definitely suggesting that you need to apply critical thinking to what's happening. And I think it's critical thinking to to all the directions you're being drawn in, as I say, because it's so easy for you to be drawn into it. And and I actually think it's telling us as well that if you start to really pay attention to the messages that your body is giving you, we're getting on that kind of kinesthetic way, test that out, apply that to the logic, you know, we must ask questions and so forth. I think you're going to find very quickly that it proves that this is a very, very, very good way for you to be sure about something. Definitely we've got one, nine and zero. Yeah, definitely. Well, the zero is definitely connection into the divine and so forth. So it's just confirming that. One is saying that is part of your life path. It's part of who you are meant to be. And nine is about change, endings and beginnings. So right back here when we had transformation, we had Uranus and then going into manifestation. So Spirit is saying you will know that you're on the right path when you've got your timing right, when your body is telling you that this is what gives you the, the fire and the inspiration and the joy and the capacity to see things through and you are doing something that is ultimately healing and transformative for yourself and or for others, probably I think with someone like you for others, that will tell you you're on the right path Then you are here to do that, you have a purpose to do that. All right, so last but not least, I wanted to finalize off with a Lightworker card just to see what Spirit's last advice to you around this is. So you have Spiritual Decree, and this card comes, and it absolutely fits this whole reading, with some at a time where you are ready to, to manifest your heart's desire, to manifest what it is that you're here for, to follow your divine path. And it, but it is a co-created thing. So it's not that you're looking for guidance just to tell you where the change is in your life and you'll just do it regardless. Or, or even for the divine to tell you this is, this is the path you have to take. It is actually a path you need to choose. So remembering the purpose of this reading, it doesn't ultimately say if you are not feeling excited and, and innovative and inspired by being a healer, for instance, you don't have to be a healer. This could simply just be saying what you feel in your body is your greatest sense of discernment. But once you use that as your barometer, for what excites you and what makes you want to go out and co-create with the universe, that's when you're on the right path. And if you keep going back to that kind of energy in particular, but stress test anything that you're not sure about with logic as well, because you do have a very strong mind as well, they're probably your two big things. There's like a, a clear sentience or a clear sort of bodily one. So clear sentient, clear tangency, as I said, clear gustinance, that kind of thing. That is a really clear barometer for you. And then there is almost your 3D or, or our, our five senses, the mind, um, connected maybe to the broader spiritual consciousness. For you, that's that's the barometer for your discernment and you can't go too wrong if that's the case. Um, but, but allow yourself time and allow yourself to focus and commit to something. So I hope that that helped for you, Pile 1. You do have a very interesting challenge because of your the breadth of your abilities, but I think that you equally do have some clear guidance here about how to really focus in on what is going to be the most materially and spiritually beneficial to you. So I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like and subscribe. And if you can feel what this is, love to hear about it in the comments. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 2, to your reading. So these first cards, as I said in the introduction, are a bit of a map to give a sense about where your various spiritual discernment powers are strongest. We will then look at how it manifests in your current life, where spirit wants you to focus on, and then also where some blind spots are before we get you some advice. It's, it's interesting because I use these cards for different sorts of purposes. Firstly, we've got the cards that are from the deck that we'll use for the, the next bit of the tarot thing, so from the dream visions, which is to help me get a sense of where some of the energies are most within your spiritual discernment. I was using gods and titans and sirens and goddesses cards to either give more information on that or give a sense about the nature of what it is that you're using these for and what you have to focus on, or even where there could be support or you could connect to these particular deities. And I think it's a little bit of the last two for you in this reading, and I'll explain why. 
And then down here, a little bit more information that gives me a sense about where your strengths particularly are. So I'm going to start with this first. I'll talk about this bit a bit later. I think your key strength, I think you've got a bit of all the various clairs, but to some degree, so does everybody. But I think for you, the main first inrush of energy, I think comes through those clairs that are more sort of what I would call in the air element, more in the sort of sort of received wisdom sort of area. So things like clairvoyance, claircognizance and clairaudience. So seeing, knowing and hearing on some level that is beyond what you could see in the 3D world, what you could hear in the 3D world, what you could know by direct evidence being given to you. And the reason I say that is there's a very strong sort of almost air mental energy here. We have the Master 33 card that says you could be a master teacher, ruling planet Neptune that very much connects to the the numinous and the liminal and so forth. We have Arcturian, which may mean that you are a star seed, you have a connection to Arcturian energies. But if not, it's saying that you definitely can do divination, channeling, those sorts of things. So you will get a lot of energy, you know, whether it's using tarot cards or runes or scrying or whatever it might be. You get a direct connection and a lot of information comes in that way that would not be available just by talking to somebody or, or something like that. You are meant to transform people and that connects to these energies which will, and also the energy healer there and being a guide. You're here to be a guide actually. You, you no doubt have very strong spirit guides to get this sort of energy but you're here to be a guide. That's part of what you're here for and it could be being a teacher literally or it could be guiding people and helping them through major change and healing and so forth I think on a psychological, emotional or spiritual level. So you have a lot of that coming through. The potential risk that you have with the persuasion card there is that you could either inadvertently misuse it to manipulate people because you just think you're right and that's it, or it could be that you are subject to people who are trying to persuade you or energies that are trying to persuade you. So it is important to work out where the discernment power sits. Now, the interesting thing is, I think while all this energy comes through to you, and you definitely have those skills, the discernment for you is much more physical. We have the Eight of Pentacles, which is a very highly developed sense around any of the senses that are to do with the body. So clear sentience, which is feeling in your body, that keen aesthetic thing. Clear tangency, which is touch. You may be very good at psychometry. In fact, I think you probably are. You'd be one of those people who could hold a ring of somebody and be able to talk to them about what's going on in their lives and that kind of thing. And also clear gustance, which is taste. You know, so you taste things in your mouth even when you know you aren't eating something. You know, that gives you a sense. So some actually with some of this sort of thing, you may be someone who has synesthesia and that sort of, you, know, you can taste colours and things like that. You may be one of those sorts of people potentially. And also with the fiery energy here, I sort of see the fiery energy a bit like clear salience, which is smell. So the, you know, smelling perfumes and everything, that sort of, that almost endorphin creating sort of energy, which is why I sort of connect it to fire energy to some degree. And it's those that are the best the best way to discern if something is accurate. So if you are feeling like you are getting a download from somewhere, if in your body it doesn't feel right, or if you smell something sour, or you taste something sour, or, or something like that, you'd be the sort of person who if you're around um, dark energy would probably smell sulfur, that kind of thing, then that is going to be a very accurate way to discern the amount of energy that's coming into you. What is the stuff that is right? What is the stuff that comes from source with the world there as opposed to I'm actually getting otherworldly energies that may not be good so it's it's making sure it's the right energy that you're connected to and the reason all this really matters as I say is I feel with the energy healer here and with the guide you are meant to guide others so it's very very important that you make sure that you stress test anything that's coming to you because people will listen to you. You naturally, people do listen to what you say. And I feel that that is what's showing up with these cards because Garuda was very brave and was able to liberate people and, and move fast and travel and, and take people forward in some way. And Baba Yaga is all about authenticity. I feel you may in fact even connect to Baba Yaga on some levels in terms of you are genuinely trying to be authentic and help others and take it 
take people to a higher level of consciousness, but you do need to be very, very careful. And they feel like this is protective energy over you because you're meant to be here to heal people, guide people towards something more authentic. You'd absolutely resonate with this type of reading, actually, because I think you'd be one of the people in the spiritual community who knows exactly what I was talking about in the introduction, where where there is a lot that appears to be shadowy and maybe not well thought out, well, well stress tested. Uh, there's a lot of ephemeral stuff that it's hard to really know whether there's there's authenticity underneath it and you will be able to tell very physically there's a very physical sort of way that you process this information and discern it and make sure that it's right like literally your gut instinct would be off the charts and pay attention to it okay so let's have a look at what using the tarot again using the dream vision tarot firstly what areas of your life in particular does spirit feel this discernment is going to be important or that you can be developing that those skills in so that i think this messaging that you've been brought in to do can be as clear and as pure and perfected as possible Okay, so I do think many of the people who've come here, you are either in or about to be in a situation where there's a little bit of sort of pain, either for you or I think <clears throat> more often than not actually pain that you're around, that you bring a generous and sort of more grounded spirit to. I do think that many of you, you will guide and help others to go through healing, some sort of energetic or emotional healing. Some of you may work in those sort of therapeutic areas potentially. Some of you may very, very definitely be helping people with healing wounds around the divine feminine i'm getting and that might be why we've got barbie yaga as well as sort of like a strong authentic energy around so some of you may be helping people or even yourself if you had sort of issues with your your mother for instance or with what it is to be nurturing and caring and abundant and all those sorts of things in a very balanced way and an authentic way i feel that the six of pentacle oh no that's the six of cups sorry the six of cups that's interesting. I thought of it as the Six of Pentacles, which is sharing and generosity, but it's actually the Six of Cups, and that is about childhood. So I think I was kind of, a veil was pulled from my own eyes there about thinking it was one and then it was another. But having said that, I think it was because Spirit wanted me to also pick up the energy of the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is about reciprocity. But this is about healing wounds around childhood, around childhood ambitions, dreams, around other people's childhoods, potentially about being a teacher and so forth, even of the very young. It, some of you who come here, you may in fact be going to have a child, start a family, something like that. And that is why it's so important for all of this to be grounded and the guidance that you bring to this child, it might be a very important child spiritually for the world. So that's quite specific, but that could be coming. But for many of you, I think it is moving people out of old pains and old painful patterns, because here we have two fours. And fours can be a bit tricky because, I mean, they can be positive or negative. And it's interesting, the one that tends to be positive, which is the ones, is reverse. So it's suggesting that there's some disharmony, that you're dealing with disharmony in some way in things not coming together and then the four of cups which is a little bit more challenging when it's the right way up is the right way up so that is suggesting emotional discontent this could be you this could be you at the moment spirit could be saying that one of the things to really release this energy that you have is to get back in balance with your body and to discern what you're doing because it looks as though if it's you you've had influences i think more like family influences or people who took some sort of mentoring educative managerial sort of influence on you they have actually disconnected you from what would have made you joyous what was true to you and there is a disconnect needed from that so that you can actually start to flourish again and that's why your discernment is important but i think for many you're actually doing this for other people so if you if you may have gone through that journey already if you have, or if that journey is not yours, but you are here to be helping and guiding others, it is something to do with reclaiming almost the inner child, reclaiming the, the emotional authenticity of that, and moving away from patterns and relationships that are not serving that, that are not authentic, as Barbie Yaga would care about, the flight, the, the, the saving. It's interesting, Garuda one of the things that he did was he saved his own mother from serpents. So you may, even for some of you, you may be helping a family member in some way. 
your parent of yours or you may be parenting a sibling or something there may be something like that about freeing some pattern but it is why it's important because a lot's coming through but some of it that's coming through to you is potentially quite manipulative so you going into your discernment actually helps you deal with that so given that there's potentially some manipulative stuff around you and given that all of us have blind spots let's have a look with the rebirth tarot what are the blind spots around your discernment that spirit would like you to know about Okay, so one of the things that's very interesting, and I particularly wanted to use a different tarot for this purpose, was to see where there were repeats of cards and what that might be telling us if they're coming up in the blind spot. So firstly, we have two repeats. We have the world reversed here, and we have the eight of pentacles. What that is telling me, just straight out from the bat, is that you underestimate the connection that you have with the divine and with with the the cycles of life and with what you could do there's a side of you possibly from your own conditioning when you were young that doesn't fully believe what's coming through that's why i think spirit wants you to go into your body and to really see it and you don't tend to do that you have a natural ability to go into your body and to feel things but it's almost like you reject that because the eight of pentacles is down here is a blind spot it's one of your actual strengths is one of the things spirit wants you to use but it's almost as though you ignore it so if you get that kind of queasy feeling in the stomach about something you tell yourself oh no i'm just being unfair or i'm sure it's going to be fine and you you ignore it so it becomes a blind spot you it, the very strength that you have becomes something that works against you you do have a tendency to not want to see everything because of authenticity is a little bit scary in a way because we have to see what's there and not what we want to see is there and because maybe you have your own wounds that you're dealing with a blind spot might be that when real information is coming through to you you literally like this hermit close your eyes you don't want to see it you don't want to pick that up and you are as i say you're so much in that kind of clear sentient clear cognizant sort of thing you deliberately shutting your eyes to something because you you don't really want to you have a bit of a war with fate or something or a war with destiny or, or fortune in some way i think that that many of you may have gone through quite a lot in your childhood or in early career or something like that or at school because there is a sense of it's almost like every time i get something from the divine it's 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 something i don't want to hear it's something i don't want to know it's it's you know it, it it takes me in a direction i don't want it stops me from completing things and and you may even feel a bit sick with it and you don't you're not using that barometer properly so it just feels to me like your blind spot is that you close your eyes to what's coming through so rather than taking the energy and then sorting it through your body and and really sorting it out it's like no i i, I i'll just let fate do what fate's doing you know I, I have no control over it and it's interesting because you are so powerful and you are meant to liberate others but it's it just feels to me like your blind spot is a lack of faith in that power that you have and a lack of ability to use it and and a feeling that that it actually has a feeling a bit like uh in i think it's roman mythology i think it was rome there was a prophetess called cassandra and she was she felt cursed because she was always right about what was coming but nobody would believe her so she would try to sort of help the sort of powers that be at the time and nobody would believe it she was kind of shunned in her own land even though she was always right there's almost a feeling like having seen things too clearly has made you suffer in some way maybe you were in a bit of a narcissistic family or something like that you're a truth teller because you did see really clearly so your your blind spot is that you're literally trying to blind yourself and it's almost like you'd you'd rely on you know tarot readings like this or something like that rather than go into your own knowing because you you've suffered for it on some level either in this life or another but i suspect most of you in this life but but you if you started to believe in it again and reconnect with your body and and understand that is going to really tell you you know what is true and what isn't true and you can actually sort of move towards your strength then you could break through that blind spot really easily i think oh not easily you haven't gone you know, this has been a lot that you've gone through but you could do it you have the capacity to do it the very 
it, the very denial is is just as strong as your capacity, if that makes sense. And maybe someone tried to persuade you. Maybe some of you have followed other people for spiritual paths and always sort of looked to other people for guru or whatever, I mean, people who could persuade you because your own abilities scare you. But Spirit is saying they don't have to be. They can be grounded. Just see that as a good thing rather than a bad thing. Okay, wow. All right, so let's see what advice Spirit has for you more generally. So we'll ask about some astrological energy to support you. I think in owning your power and then processing it through your body so that you can feel kind of comfortable with, with what you're seeing and, and feel that it's likely to be right. First quarter moon, Virgo, and ninth house. Okay, so first quarter moon is all about sort of getting going with stuff. So this is, I think it's your spirit wanting, hoping I think maybe even this reading helps unblock you and get you moving and allowing you to make some decisions and to back yourself and so forth. I think it's saying that some of the challenges and stuff that you've gone through was to be accelerated development. It was not to make you hide from your own power. It was to make you understand it and how strong you actually are. Like you don't have to worry if stuff's going to come out that, that isn't what you wanted to hear because it's just going to give you information to make you make decisions that, that take you where you want to be and that can help other people to do that. It's definitely doubling down on Virgo being about the body but it's interesting because the tarot card there is the hermit so again it's saying you you are denying the very feelings you have in your body it's like you just you think that's always something else you know if you if you started to cough a lot you think you know you've got a cold and it might be just that your throat chakra is trying to tell you because it, the body will tell you that there's a block around communication for instance so you it, it's just saying yes you're very very strong in that you can trust that the other thing that it's saying that might help you with the ninth house because the ninth house is about learning and so forth is that if you if you pursued your own studies in whatever spiritual path you might want and so forth, I think you'll eventually teach and guide others with it, but it may make you feel more confident of it. Something's affected your confidence. Someone or something's affected your confidence. And I think if it was a someone or a entity or whatever, it's because they were very well aware of how powerful you actually are. So you've just got to reclaim that. And you do it through your body and you maybe do it through learning so that you can convince your mind that it's okay as well, that you're that you're not imagining it. Okay, so I want to use the stories oracle as well, which is also based on constellations. So I'll pull a couple of constellation cards and each of them have a question. The question can be a bit hard to read, so I'll read it out and then put it down. So this is about the questions that could be worthwhile asking when you're building up your discernment and, and your capacity to move forward with your skills in this regard. So firstly, we have Delphinus. And the question is, if we carry the work of our ancestors, are they not immortal? Okay, so there's something about family, and it may be even distant family for you. It may be about finding your own soul family as well too and your true ancestors, but there's something there. And it's almost, I think, carrying the work of them, making them immortal might say that you can detach from what didn't work, but you can actually use what did. So you don't have to completely separate. If this is what, around family differences in beliefs or, or, or even maybe suppression of your sense of self to some degree, you don't necessarily have to completely separate. Or if you did, you're still carrying what was good in it. All right, let's have one more question for you. So we've got Erid Danis, and the question is, how might you flourish if you gave yourself permission to change? Yeah, if you, I think if you gave yourself permission to own your abilities, and, and as I say, you allow this energy to come through, use your physical discernment, your spiritual uh, senses physically to, to really calibrate what you're going to go forward with, may be stress tested against learning about different spiritual paths or whatever it might be. Allow yourself to be guided and then become the guide. Okay, let's use the wisdom of the sacred bee for some energies around what could be helpful for you. Growth and tranquility. Oh, that's lovely. Now, I, th I think this is the thing. 
I think that you are meant to grow. You're meant to sort of like grow for yourself. And I think you're meant to help other people grow towards authenticity and so forth. And if you allow yourself to do that, if you allow yourself to own your abilities and become more tranquil about it because you know that you have your, your discernment, you know how to stress test things, you know how to find your way through all of this, then those two energies can support you moving forward. And as I say, take you to a point where I think you're helping others with exactly the same journey. There's something quite universal about whatever you've gone through or if not universal certainly very common that you can actually help other people who've gone through it so we're going to also ask for a sign for synchronicity for you that that will help you with your discernment juggler okay so so maybe this is picking up that some of what you're having to deal with is is juggling a lot of responsibilities. I mean, I did have a feeling around family and so forth with this and, and you know, maybe even starting a family. So there could be sort of things around juggling the various information that comes through, the various sort of discernment that you're using to, to sort it through, the various things that you're trying to balance and manage in your life. But I think it may be saying here that whenever you feel the need to juggle different demands on you, this is a really good way to tr test out what you're getting in a sense, almost channel to you and how it feels, like does it feel right? So you can start to, to stress test that and realize how talented you are in that area simply by validation. Because one of the things about, I think, spiritual stuff is that we can believe all sorts of things about ourselves, but we really need to validate it to really believe in it. So we might like to think, you know, that we're channeling from the divine, but if we channel from the divine, we discern what that means, and then what we expect it to happen happens, it tells us something. We start to go, okay, that I couldn't have known that through empirical evidence. I felt it, I channeled it, I sensed it, and it did turn out the way that I expected once I went through my discernment. So I think there's something about looking at how you use this for juggling the responsibilities in your life, it will make you more and more tranquil about the fact that you do have these abilities. Okay, so to finish off, firstly, we're going to use the fortune dice for some channeled energy and information from sort of the angelic and otherworldly spheres. And then we'll use the last card that was under the tarot that you chose to come <clears throat> to this reading to look at a light worker message for you. So the fortune dice come from a woman called Bobby Richardson who has her own channel that channels uh, sort of otherworldly energy and angelic energy and so forth. So if you're interested in that, which I wouldn't be surprised if you've come to a reading like this, you might want to check out her channel as well. Okay. So firstly, in terms of the dice, we have intuition. So yeah, I think it's just doubling down on you are very, there is a lot that is channeled through you to through clairvoyance, claircognizance, all of that sort of stuff, pay attention to it. And then earth, see, there you go. It's, it's saying it again, let the information come through and then earth it. Don't underestimate the, the earthy side of your discernment because it's very on point. In terms of numbers, we have one, three and nine. So one is about your life path, new beginnings and so forth. So I think this sort of information and working with this gives you a, a new sense of how to go forward. Three can be about communion, community, change, all of those sorts of things. I think that this this brings in that energy of, of what is who you want to connect with and what works for you and not feeling so much that you've got to kind of pull back from your own knowing. And nine is a sort of end of a cycle or a revolution, a spiritual sort of growth and, and upbuilding. So there's definitely, definitely something like that happening for you as you own these abilities. You may see these sort of numbers around as well. So last but not least, what is the light worker message for you? So as it turns out with our chemical mutations, absolutely the, the, the process I've been describing, because this is all about channeled energy coming through the body and being seen through the body and being experienced through the body. It's the alchemy of spiritual evolution in both the physical 3D and also from, from the divine. And it's interesting because it does say that when this process occurs, and I think it could be saying that that process is going to start happening with you if you own this and, you, and you're and you happy to focus on it, that sometimes the way it shows up is that you get aches and pains or you get rashes like you were, you know, detoxing or something like that. These can be symptoms of going through that cleansing, going through that healing and so forth. It could be saying with the energy healing that, you know, you could benefit from potentially going to an energy healer if there's one that you that you uh, 
respond to or that you've heard good things about. But again, pay attention to how you feel in that situation as to whether you continue that or whether you need that. But certainly you are all about bringing that light energy in and processing it on a physical level. You are alchemical at your core. And that is a very transformative, freeing and authentic process to go through. It cuts away what was not working anymore. There's a process in the or there's a stage in the alchemical process called the negrado where everything is burnt down to its constituent constituent parts. That's a bit hard to say. Uh, and at that point, then out of that comes the white rose, the peacock, all the sort of like the perfection of the soul and so forth. So I think it's definitely saying that you have that capacity to transmute and mutate anything that was negative, clear that out and bring the light in. But it is done at a bodily level for you. Okay, I hope that that was helpful, Pile 2. I hope it resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if this does resonate and you care to share in the comments about it, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 3, to your reading. So as I said in the introduction, these cards are to give a bit of a map of where your particular areas for discernment are and how that operates sort of spiritually and then we'll sort of drill into what that looks like in your life now and what your blind spots might be and spirits advice i think there's actually almost a like a kind of a half and a half around this it's sort of like i think there's two areas and i think what spirit is saying is that your best discernment depends upon the issue that you're looking at and why i say that is Starting over here, firstly, we have the Ten of Pentacles, which su suggests a very bodily sort of sense. So you're talking about things like clear sentience, the sort of body feeling, you know, if you feel sick or something when something's about to go wrong, <clears throat> or if you're particularly vitalized when something is a really great idea. Clear tangency, which is touch. So, you know, people who are good at psychometry who, you know, can pick up a ring and, and work out what's going on in somebody's life by holding their ring, for instance, or clear gustinance, which is about taste. So you might taste unusual things in your mouth that gives you some information and so forth. There's something very bodily that has to do with when you're dealing with shamanic energy. There is a shamanic side to you. With the nature sort of energy here and the psychic medium, you do very much connect, I think, to the other worldly realms. <clears throat> to shadow areas, to go on the shaman's path, to be a medium literally and connect to those that have passed over. And I think quite often to help release karmic bonds and rage. It feels as though there, when you are dealing with either helping yourself or others around heavy karma, heavy sort of emotional rage, anger, you know, injustices, whatever it might be, your best barometer for knowing that what you are getting and what you are using is right is what your body is telling you. And I'm also getting it's very important when you go on that, like a shamanic journey or a healing journey or a almost a justice seeking journey, that first make sure your body is strong. You know, with, with people who do shamanic rituals, they don't go into it without making sure they're physically prepared. But it's it's a it's a sign of that, and that is that is showing discernment to be ready and know when you're ready to do it and when to go go into battle. It's also a sign of discernment physically to know when you feel enraged or someone who is going to physically feel that. If there's if there's something you've almost suppressed because you don't want to look at it, you'll feel it and you'll know that it's there physically. But it's all to do with your shamanic gifts and your shamanic journey and breaking your own karma bonds and helping other people to do that, I think, through mediumship. So I do think you're a psychic medium, but it's the way that you will know that you are connecting, even though you may well, and I think you do have some other clears that are actually more like clear, clear seeing, clear hearing and everything. The way that you will really know that you are right when you are in this, this phase, the sort of almost, <clears throat> as I say, shamanic healing, dealing with injustice side is how you feel physically. Over on this side is your abilities that are more of the mind. A little bit around clear empathy as well too with the heart there, but I think there's a lot around mind and study here. Thoth is about wisdom, is about learning, and so is the Hierophant. So I feel like there is a lot here around how you help to discern what's coming through to you on a more clairvoyant, claircognizant, or clairaudience type of way. So clear seeing, knowing, or hearing is to stress test it through 
your spiritual beliefs and your spiritual practices and so forth. You are definitely becoming more and more sensitive on that level with level three consciousness coming through. I think you're actually beyond level three consciousness, to be honest. But I think what's happening here is that so much of the higher order consciousness is around here helping others and helping healing and dealing with the really big injustices of the world. That really for your own learning, you're really only starting to, to credit those abilities. It's like you credit them if you're, if you're dealing with an injustice, but you, there's a bigger frame that you could actually work with <clears throat> so you're starting to see that and you're starting to ask more and more philosophical questions you're the sort of person who if you meditated and you sort of saw visions or whatever within it you would want to go and search and see and validate some of that through learning and knowing and i think spirit is saying that that is the right thing to do that you will find that things that seem to be just from your imagination are actually really grounded in in other traditions and that's going to give you a way of discerning what is coming through that's right you are meant to communicate what you do and command respect for what you do. And you also need to respect those that talk in this area. You're not, you don't take any of this lightly and you double check the facts. And I think that Spirit is saying that's the right thing to do. But that's around developing your sense of knowing and your sense of confidence personally that you have found the right spiritual path and that you are developing the right spiritual sort of practices for yourself Whereas this over here, as I say, is the shamanic journey. And there could, in fact, be a correlation between the two. Spirit may be saying here that one of the things, if you're not already looking into it, is look into sort of shamanism, energy healing, that kind of thing. Because there's something in that. And you do have some rage or you are around some form of rage that needs to be reduced, cleared out and so forth. And having the right... The right sort of framework and philosophy to channel all this information is going to be important. Okay, so let's have a look at what Spirit says is going on in your life at the moment, because it looks like some interesting things could be happening that will help you either determine which one you should be focusing on at the moment, or if one actually leads to the other and then lead and sort of like almost in a circle. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you guys are full-on psychic mediums. You are definitely, definitely, as I say, sort of like able to go to the depths. Definitely. that. And it's, it's really interesting. I don't think you necessarily yet credit yourself fully with it. I think that's what Spirit is saying here. You, you know that you can do all this, but with Memento Mori, which is a particular card for this deck, which is a card about sort of mediumship and the dead and, and the life processes and so forth and the psychic medium there, I think it's definitely saying that you are meant to do something with psychic medium abilities in this life. And you probably haven't yet fully done it. You might do it a bit, but you haven't got it to the point that it could be at. Partly, I think, because you are around something where there is a lot of debate and discussion about what is the right way to do it. You could, I'm getting that for some of you, you may be learning something like mediumship or shamanism at the moment, and there might be a lot of discord about is this the right way or not, you know, there's, or Reiki or something like that. There are, there are different sort of groups that do Reiki that say this is the Reiki way to do it, and, and another one might say, no, no, this is the Reiki way to do it. So I think there's almost something like that around you at the moment, which is why I think the Thoth and the Hierophant is here, and why part of your discernment is about channeling in that information, but then but then processing it almost in a 3D philosophical way so that you can be sure that, that you're actually following the right path and you're developing the right sort of skills. For you, there is something about balancing your relationships with others, with the Two of Cups. There could, in fact, be a love relationship at you, with you at the moment that is really triggering a lot of this and a lot of the healing, or it could be that that's coming in. It could also be that this is you in relationship with yourself because it's almost like this is two aspects of yourself here and this has nothing to do with gender but we have the queen of swords which feels like the intellectual person who will not trust anything unless it's intellectually rigorous and we have the patroness which in this deck is the patroness of divination and the spirit which is connects to this side of things the shaman so i think part of this is that the message is that you are starting to balance those two and see that they are not opposing forces they actually can support each other 
So the mind does not have to be critical of anything that isn't grounded in a spiritual tradition, but it can give some philosophical underpinning to process what comes from that. Equally, the direct experience of mediumship and shamanism doesn't have to shun spiritual sort of philosophy. It doesn't have to say this is the true thing. It, it's balancing the two. This is why there's very much this sense that you have both those things, but they almost sit a little bit separate at the moment. And I think this is saying that bringing them together within yourself, in harmony within yourself, is the way to really unlock this energy because you're there's something, there's a battle about, you know, what's the right way to do it or what's the right thing to believe. And it's probably why you were drawn to a reading about spiritual discernment. So it is saying you can do it. You can take the raw material and you can process it through doing your own research. And that's probably the way to do it rather than having anybody else tell you because there's, there's debate by the looks of things. So if you're doing that, let's ask with a different deck about what your blind spot could be. Okay, so the interesting thing here is a part of the blind spot is that I think there's so much information that rushes through to you and you have a natural tendency to, to move into the mind if that's the case, that you maybe deny a little bit the energy of the Ten of Pentacles here. And, and the interesting thing about it is I think it is because your, your primary spiritual powers are in a sort of divinatory, other world transition, sort of, you know, moving between the worlds, um, mediumship, all of those sort of things. And and so you may not always think, you may think that the, the material world is almost secondary, but this is saying that you do have the capacity to discern what comes through physically, and that's part of the shamanic, that's part of that journey. So part of your blind spot is maybe not giving it as much credit. I think that particularly if you are in a contested area at the moment, I think it's like, well, going to the books and going to the spiritual traditions and going to the masters and following them is the way to do it. But this is saying, well, no, in fact, there's a lot that you can do yourself. Like, and that's what you're meant to do. You're, you, you have a blind spot about worrying about being on your own. Don't worry about that. That's actually the pathway for you at the moment. It's that block. It's wanting to find consensus and agreement with people that is causing the problem because it's reflecting an internal battle you're having yourself. And if you find that balance within yourself, that you value both those sides of you, you won't be so beholden to other viewpoints and so forth. That will then allow you to make the decisions you need to make and to feel justified in, in how you view yourself. Because I think that you, I think that you feel like you've always got to follow the masters, the, the spiritual doctrines or whatever. And spirit is saying, no, you actually are far more advanced than you think. It's just that you use this in a different way. Instead of using all the doctrine and so forth and, and the people who might have taught you as being the ones who ultimately always encapsulate the, the depth and breadth of you, you use them as a touch point, part of your discernment, on top of also the discernment around what you physically feel and so forth so that you can validate what is coming through to you with what is really your strongest senses, which, as I say, are the clairvoyance, the clear cognizance, the clear audience, those sorts of things, the, the, the very classic mediumship. So I just think this is about a journey of, of understanding what you have and that you don't need to keep learning from people anymore. I mean, there's nothing to say. It is saying you can go to that to validate. It is part of how you can discern things, but that is part of how you discern it. The other is how you personally feel. Okay, so let's look at some advice from Spirit about this for you. So firstly, we'll do some astrological energetic advice for you. Air, conjunction, and Earth. Well, firstly, we'll go to the conjunction in a minute and I'll look at what the planets are that we're talking about with that. But that is exactly what we're talking about here. It's about the marriage of the two. It's actually very interesting. The conjunction of air and earth is what you actually know. That is how you are you discern through your mind and through learning with what you personally feel yourself. Because that, I think, will validate for you that what is coming through to you is true and authentic. 
That's the best way to do it. So because if you just sat on the air, you could end up in that situation where if you get information coming through to you, if somebody tells you, oh, you know, that you respect, oh, yes, this means X, you will limit it to that. And in fact, if you'd gone into your body as well, you might have you might have felt, well, I don't really feel comfortable with that saying. I only feel comfortable if it's it's that and this as well. It's like you it's it's a self limitation you're putting on yourself at the moment. That's what it's saying. But but bringing those two things together and then having your discernment yours and within you and with that kind of conjunction of those two energies. But I'm also going to shuffle and see what planetary conjunction energy there is too to see if that gives us even more of a nuance about what Spirit's trying to say here. So I'm just going to deal out till I get... Oh, we've got Saturn, firstly. Saturn and Jupiter. I <laughs> see. It's really interesting. You really are... You really are pulled in two different directions that are equally strong and equally valid for you. But it's like, I think you do... You tend to sort of like Saturn more than Jupiter. You trust Saturn more than Jupiter. The, the sort of slow, steady mind relation... You know, like... Who's the authority on this? As opposed to the Jupiter, the thing that brings joy, expansion, a sense of, of growth and so forth. So, And I think it's maybe that it's almost like you're in some sort of like world, you know, in terms of your work or your creativity or spirituality where Saturn is about achievements. Like I'll get the accreditation. I'll get the approval of those I respect. That, that, that's how I validate everything. That's how I discern everything. But you're not growing if you do that. Jupiter in the Saturn then effectively by sitting on top of Jupiter stops your growth. So your growth needs to balance. That's why it's important for you to honour both those things and to use your discernment on both those levels. Okay, let's use a different sort of astrological deck. This is about constellations and it has questions. The questions can be a little bit hard to read, so I'm just going to read them out to you. So firstly, we have... Crater, and the question is, where are you at? Where are you at on your priority list? Yeah, where is your knowing? <laughs> where is your experience? And you know, it's interesting that we've got segment there because underneath all of this, if you don't honour what is yours and what you're seeing and and what you're feeling within your body, you will get enraged. You will feel that you aren't recognised. You will feel that you're limited, and it's true. But that, I think that spirit is saying that you're doing it to yourself. That you are more than capable of checking the books yourself. You're more than capable of doing that sort of thing and using that discernment that way. Don't give that power over to someone else. Okay, so let's ask for one other question for you. And we've got Hercules. Wow. Ask yourself, what are you really fighting for? All right, so if it comes to it, and there's something with segment because there's a bit of rage there. If it comes to it and you find it really hard to make that step into going, I'm going to own what my ability is here. I'm going to own my own truth. You know, go back to your first principles of, of what were you doing all this for in the first place? Because that might be the thing that liberates you. It's it's like it's you're not fighting to get validation around all of this, or you shouldn't be because you are actually very talented with it. It's what what were you trying to? What have you found in your journey, your shamanic journey? What are you trying to redress? What are you trying to balance within yourself and with others? You know, what are you fighting for? Because I don't think it's the validation that you are you are kind of almost in your 3D world at the moment seeking. It's like you, you are not going to find the validation of your ability, which is significant, through just going to the experts. You are going to find it by your own research, your own validation, and how it feels physically to you. And if you go to what you're fighting for, that will probably give a very strong physical feeling to you about what's the right areas to look what what should you research what should you sort of build as your own personal moral and spiritual framework okay so let's ask the wisdom of the sacred bee for what energies are best for you to be focusing on reverence the prism okay so i do think that both of those things are picking up Picking up, so this sort of feels like sacred geometry and and the sort of the, the conceptual sort of structures of things spiritually. And reverence also is like, what do we revere? What do we follow? And so forth. I think it really is trying to, again, get you to do that research yourself and to, to go into your sort of inner knowing around it and to revere what you do yourself a little bit more. Understand how much you are connected to 
the prism, you know, the 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 sense of of all the interconnected sacred geometry and so forth of the world. So I think that's again, where what do you revere? And what you should revere is the philosophy, not the person speaking the philosophy. You should be finding that for yourself. So let's ask for some synchronistic signs for you if you are on the right track. And if your discernment is, is working at its its peak. Doorways. Okay, so if you sort of see doorways in meditations, if you read about them, if you see pictures of them, if you find yourself noticing doorways all the time, particularly maybe notice whether they're open or shut, all of those sort of things, these are, it's a synchronistic sign to you that you are connecting. And it's interesting because a doorway connects one world to another. And I think within you're connecting one part of you to another. So doorways, that sense that you can move between the two, that the doors are open for you to move between the two, I think synchronistically is telling you you're starting to get that balance right. Okay, so to close out, we're going to use the Fortune Dice and we're also going to use a Light Worker card for a final message. So the Fortune Dice come from Bobby Richardson who has her own channel around channeling otherworldly and angelic energy, so you might want to check that out. Um, but for the purposes of this, this is just to get a sense of any sort of like number, angelic energy and so forth that would also help you. So we have contact. That may very well suggest using these dice that you have contact with guides, otherworldly or other you know, off-world energies and so forth. So which might be where some of the wisdom is coming from. It, it may also be saying have discernment about which ones to connect with, what ones feel right to you. If something doesn't feel right, maybe don't have that connection I'm getting. Then we also have dreams. Yeah, and in your dreams. So in your dreams, a lot of this comes. So Really I physically feel into the dream after you wake up. Did it feel like a good energy? In which case, take it on. If it didn't feel physically like a good energy, don't take it on. And if it did feel good, maybe then if you want to, go and research to see whether you're dreaming particular symbols and so forth. This is very much about the foundations of your life with two fours there. And with zero, it's a spiritual intervention on the foundations of your life about health and about structure and so forth. So it is important for you because you do delve into the into the depths and the darkness in a way with shamanism to have a really structured way of dealing with it and to validate it on that level. But it is also, for energy, is very earthy. So it's very much saying connect your spirit to the earthy energy. Okay, so last but not least, we'll have a look at the light worker card that was under the tarot. So I think this goes to the core of whatever Sekhmet was here for, which is whatever the rage is or whatever there is. This card comes up when there is a sort of a need to clear sort of emotions, emotions that are no longer working for you and so forth or no longer working for those that you're trying to help. So it, it uses sort of analogies of sort of like muddy water and the mud settles. It looks like it's clear, but the minute sort of something stirs something up or triggers it, it's all muddy again. So I think it's it's the emotional connection, the two of cups connection we had before about you falling in love in a way with the two sides of your personality because you need to do that because you do draw in so much energy that needs to get some sort of filter, literally just like water would be filtered. And I'm getting for some of you, if you don't filter your water, filter it, particularly filter out fluoride and things like that to really activate your pineal, pineal gland. I'm just kidding. That, that's a particular message for some who will come to this reading. So there's filtering your water, filtering what goes into your body again on that sort of level as well with this. But it is saying there's something emotional under all of this. And, and if you can clear that energy out and trust yourself a bit more, which I think is what it's really all about, you'll release any of that kind of pent-up rage and you will get to that clarity that you're looking for. So I hope that that is helpful, Pile 3. I hope it makes sense and it resonates for you. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you do realise what all this is about, you've had an aha moment or anything like that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome part four to your reading. So these first cards, as I said in the introduction, are a bit of a map of where are your sort of spiritual discernment strengths and we'll then look into how that operates in the world and where the blind spots might be and so forth. And this has been a really interesting set of readings because I think it has picked up the discernment and then also other messages as well. And I think this reading is no different to that. So I think what's happening here is the two primary areas of your spiritual discernment are here and then almost the reason that you're developing them are here in this particular reading. 
So let me do this first and then I'll explain what I mean by that. So there seem to be two very clear areas where you have very strong spiritual discernment abilities and you may use both at the same time or you may use one to validate the other or you may use them in separate scenarios. But one is all around feeling and the body. So this is picking up things like clear empathy and, and sort of the feelings that you have for others and the sort of empathy and so forth that are born witch. And it's interesting that that came up with the, the pentacle, I must say, connects in with others. And there's a lot about love, which we'll get to, which is why I'm saying this clear empathy, but also with move and with the spiritual arts in general, which seem to be about artistic and creative expressions, dance, think of the Sufi dervishes with their sort of twirling around dance to connect to the divine and so forth. There is something in your body. So you will probably find you have one or more strengths in clear sentience, which is feeling things within the body, clear tangency, which is touch, psychometry, that sort of thing, and clear gustance, which is taste, like tasting things when you haven't actually eaten something that, that gives you some extra information. So there's definitely something that is processed and you can discern what is true by going to those sort of senses. Equally, you have this sort of clear, clear voyance, clear cognizance, clear audience, all the things that are connected to the connections to the other world, to mediumship, those sorts of things. You could get it through meditation. You may even be a meditation teacher, but you definitely move between the worlds. So you have that capacity to see at that higher level. And again, it may well be that what happens is you get receive the information in one way and then you test it in the other. And you may be quite well used to doing this, that you look for two different ways of your knowing to validate so that you can go, OK, I believe that, that, that that's right. And, and it's because there's an artistry to what you do and because you are learning lessons as you go along. You're not what I like about this is that you're not taking for granted that everything that's coming through either of these senses is right. You are testing it and validating it almost through a different set of senses, which I think is very, very powerful and good. Why I think you've got this is that there's something about love and redeeming, I think, a love and redeeming a sense of yourself as well. And, and to some degree, your sense of love, your sense of your body, your sense of who you are, your physical attractiveness, love in a very physical way, as well as sort of emotional and spiritual. There is something that you are redeeming that is true to you that I think may come from a past life. I suspect most of the people who come to this reading will have a very significant relationship this time around. Whether it manifests in the 3D or not, I don't know. There could be twin flame 5D type of scenarios here, with particularly with this sort of energy as well. But it's about love and it's about regaining faith in love and, and drawing everything in a way with the ace of, ace of cups here from a love base and getting away from feeling alone in some way and being too judgmental about yourself. It looks to me like either in a past life or in this life, you have somehow seen yourself as not worthy of love or not capable of bringing love into your life or something like that. Some of you may have felt that you were such an outsider and so strange <laughs> that you couldn't find your other half. But I do feel that that's possible. But part of it is about having faith in that. The story of Eros with Eros and Psyche was that Eros was there, but was in a sense hidden from Psyche. She couldn't see what he looked like. And that the trust and the love beyond that was what kept them together. But then when Psyche's sisters tricked her into thinking he was ugly, she used a candle to try and see what he looked like. And the candle wax dropped on him and he then realized that she'd lost faith and, and that he then left her. So there is a story allegory in there about having faith in your attractiveness, in your ability to be loved and your ability to also love and to trust your emotional information. So I think what's happening here is, and also with the Valkyries, as I say, redeeming yourself, is that you have a great love, I think, in this life to come or you're already experiencing it. And it's probably not going to be necessarily the most easy of scenarios. It's a bit like a tower relationship, I think, or as I say, a twin flame. But the point of these senses is this is how you're going to be able to discern if it's the right one. So how does it feel to you in, through the physical sort of like extra senses? And what do you get? What lessons and information do you get when you meditate on it, when you go into other worlds, when you connect to guides and so forth? So your story is about love in some way. 
but this is about how you discern and this is why it's so important to discern because you don't want to be tricked by others around who you love you don't want to to be in a battle around love you don't want to be on your own you don't want to sort of suppress the sort of physical side of you that is really powerful you don't want to be judged unfairly and so forth so very interesting it has a particular feel to it this reading so let's ask for a little bit more detail from spirit therefore on what's going on at the moment around your life and around where you need to sort of develop and pay attention to your discernment through your body and through your sort of clairvoyance and other similar sorts of senses Well, this is very positive i have to say it suggests to me if you haven't found this great love you're going to fairly soon and if you have and you've been going through difficulties with the emotional patterns here with the eight of cups to let go of some of those that you're in the process of letting go of it in fact i'm getting that it is through your sort of almost what i would call the senses of the air and the senses of the body that you are processing the emotional energy that's no longer working for you so you're doing the work you're doing it really really well and with all these discs so the the ace the 10 and the queen of discs it's saying that this should manifest into something long-standing something very promising and something that i think moves quite quickly i think this is why it's important for you to be aware of the discernment because it's like the, the relationship, the opportunity comes along and very quickly it could move to something committed. That's But you need to feel certain about it. You need to be, feel certain that this is the one that you want to become loyal to. You, you need to use your discernment to decide who to become loyal to. Is this the great love and so forth? So that you can bring about the abundance that's associated with that. But it, it is a very fast process. It's like, I don't think that there's going to be a lot of doubt about it. But I mean, that doesn't mean it's easy, it, but it's it's very easy for you to go from, from the beginning of thinking, aha, through to thinking this is the one I want to be with forever. And you need to have processed the emotional energies and so forth and worked out what abundance emotionally would mean to you or what love means to you with the Venus sort of energy around the Empress again so that you can trust it, so that you're not second-guessing yourself once you've once you've connected and if you do know who this person is and if there's difficulties it's really just processing some of that emotion um but but using your discernment to make sure is this the right one because there is someone significant for you this time around i think pile four and you it, the really important thing is to use your discernment to make sure that you put that energy where it's best put okay so let's ask what your blind spots could be because i really think this is around making sure that you identify the right person that's going to be the big discernment for you. So let's ask where the blind spots could be using a different tarot deck. Okay. So firstly... It's interesting that we get judgment twice. I was particularly using a different deck to see if this happened, to see where maybe a natural gift is actually being used as a blind spot. And this is about doubting your judgment, I think. So at the moment you have a blind spot that comes from, I, I don't know what to trust. This is why it was important to be coming to this reading and understanding what are your strongest senses to really really do that sort of discernment so that you would have the courage you, you are kind of lacking in the courage to make the commitment or to make the step by the looks of things so but that is about you're worried you could get it wrong so and that's understandable i mean i think that's that's so true about relationships in general i sort of found for years for reading for people that when you talk about things in career or any of those sort of things if you sort of say here are the energies people will usually take up the the information they'll make some decisions they'll take some action but they they censor them we all censor ourselves around love you know and it's like 
you know, friends would say, oh, you know, will so-and-so ring or whatever? And I go, well, why don't you? And, oh, no, 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 I can't do that, you know, and all those sort of weird rules that are put around relationships. And then I go, well, would you think twice about calling me? And they go, no. And I go, well, why should it be any different? If it's going to be a good relationship, it's going to be fine if you contact them. If it's not, then you're going to find out sooner. So, so yeah, it, that's that's the kind of energy in general, which is not necessarily to spam somebody and call them, you know, 20 times a day or anything, but, you know, just the kind of balance that you would do with a friendship. But <clears throat> we put a lot of fear into relationships because it matters so much to our heart that I think here it's saying that you, you have a blind spot about making the decisions when you need to make them, whether to say yes or no to something. You may be someone who who falls in love quite quickly and falls maybe into sort of sensual attraction quite quickly by the looks of things. But there's some patterns. There's some patterns to sort of really look at how do they, how do these things really make you feel physically? How, what kind of did your spidey sense tell you over on this side? There's something there where there is a capacity to sort of jump in before you've done the discernment, before you've determined whether there is actually the grounding for this. You see, it's sort of like the ace to the ten. You've got the three here. It's almost like you jump from the ace to the three and you almost ignore what that's telling you and then jump to the ten because you're in love with love. So there is a side of you that is in love with love, but you are actually meant to find the right person and be with somebody. But it is saying you need to use these sort of discernment powers so that you can feel more confident of what you do and, and who to make those connections with so that you get the promise of the Ten of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress and so forth. So let's get some advice for you around all of this pile four. So firstly, some astrological advice. I wanted to come out. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Eighth house. Yeah, that fits. South node. And waning givers. Okay. So the eighth house, why I sort of laughed when it came out, is that the eighth house is all about intimacy, really powerful connections. It's ruled by Pluto and by Scorpio. So all that really depth psychology and depth emotion and so forth. But it is also a very occult spiritual house. And so relationships connected by the eighth house are very powerful spiritually. So I think it is definitely saying that that, that is part of your life path this time. And to, to trust that, but then to use the discernment to make sure you've associated that with the right person. With the south node, you are probably also breaking bonds with certain people in this life as well. So maybe one of the confusions and one of the issues and why the sort of blind spots is that you may be also drawn to people that are not your right partner, but you've been with before in other lives or something like that, or patterns, patterns of relationships that you're moving away from, because the south node is all about that. It's the karmic path. It's what we're moving away from to develop into who we want to be. And with Wayne and Gibbous, this is about the calm after the storm. So if you have that sort of sense of appreciation for what you've learnt and, and what you're learning about your discernment and what information you can trust, then you can start to move towards something that feels less like a battle and more like love. So it's possible that some of you have had quite embattled relationships because you jumped in too quick, I would say, and didn't use the discernment that your skills and spiritual abilities could have given you if you'd just gone a little bit slower. So let's ask with another deck that is sort of astrologically based because it has constellations. It has questions. So it's questions that spirit is suggesting you ask yourself as you use your spiritual discernment. We've got Capricornus. What if that magic you were looking for was in the work you were oh, avoiding? Oh, that's interesting. So it might also be the work to really test this out. That's where the magic is. So if this is about relationship, and look, if it's not, if it's about creativity or something like that, and you need to be in love with what you create, it's a similar thing where you've maybe jumped in too quickly before you've really worked out the basis of it. So in either case, this I think is saying that if you avoid the work of really testing it out, the magic that you have to make sure you bring the right thing in may also be avoided. So what else, Spirit, suggests you ask? Hercules. Okay. Ask yourself, what are you really fighting for? Now, that's interesting because the Valkyrie is a fighting energy and so forth. So what are you fighting for here? You know, and it looks to me like you're fighting for the right love. Therefore, it's not about trying to 
retrofit something in that doesn't really feel quite right or that you know on some level in your spidey sense as I say it isn't quite right because you just you just want to be in love it's finding the right person and using your discernment to do that you're fighting for the right relationship not just a relationship okay let's and it means I have to say that because you are in love with love even though I think that you are someone who's meant to have a divine union of some form in this life you may you may find the false ones sometimes and it is very very important to to keep your power and your discernment in determining that make sure you give your loyalty where it should be given okay let's see what energy the wisdom of the sacred bee has to to give you Growth. It's interesting that came up in another reading. And tranquility. I've got a feeling both those cards might have. Maybe they came up in different readings. I can't remember. But certainly, even if it's the same, it might just mean that that somebody's come to two readings and there's and there's two different things, and one of which is the great love. But certainly, growth comes from the tranquility within. I think in this case, that's what it that's what it's saying at this point in time. The empress. The growth of love and all that sort of comes from, from a tranquil place where you've actually used your discernment to make sure that you're putting your energy where it is best put. So to help with that, let's ask for what synchronistic signs might help you know that you're using your discernment in its highest possible form. Epiphany. <laughs> okay, the light bulb moment. You may literally see sort of light bulbs here. People say, oh, I've just had an epiphany. All those sort of things could just be indications. And if you're thinking about or deciding something at that time, it's probably telling you you're on the right path. But it's also, I think there is an aha moment for you. It's the aha moment when you find the person that you're connected to and you find both emotionally and physically attractive also makes you feel in your body that it's right and in your meditative practice also connects it's the epiphany the aha moment where the connection is made it may also be for some of you the epiphany that you've been connecting all this love and all this energy to the wrong person because you've been ignoring your inner knowing in some way because you wanted to rush to have a relationship so it could be the epiphany that you need to leave where you are at the moment to bring the right person in or it could be the epiphany that aha you found the right person and trust through those discernments, what you are getting around that. Okay, so to close out, I'm going to use, firstly, the fortune dice. Um, these are created by Bobby Richardson, who does a channel on channeling, uh, sort of extraterrestrial and angelic energy, if you're interested in checking that out. But these dice give us a bit of angelic numbers and angelic guidance and extraterrestrial guidance. So firstly, we have intuition. So you have very strong intuition, and you would. With that kind of all the clear, as I say, clear, clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairaudience, those sort of energies, you definitely have a strong intuition. Pay attention to that. And then we have oneness, yeah, because it's about finding the other half. It's about finding the, the connection, because when you find the divine union, you also connect more to the divine in general. So that, that, that's what this is about. This, you are meant to have that in this life. And then we have two, which is about relationship, bringing a foundation, which is four, that has a spiritual transformative energy, which is nine. So again, it's saying it over and over. This is, this is not to say you are nothing without a relationship by any means, but it is certainly saying that that is an important part of this life journey for you. And there are many benefits and riches that can come from that if you use a discernment to connect to the right one. So... Last but not least, we'll use the card that the other card that was under the tarot card that you chose to come to this reading. So this is from a light worker oracle to give a sense about light worker advice for you. You have initiation by air. So I think that's really interesting because I think this is this card is all about quietening the mind and allowing the true energy and the true connection to come through. And I think this is this is adding to this side to some degree because this is all the sort of air, air element type discernment i think you know, as i say the clairvoyance the clear cognizance the clear audience the sort of stuff that kind of filters through and is recognized first by the conscious mind so that's definitely saying that but i think it may also be saying meditation certainly can help with that and i think it would be saying definitely practice that as much as possible but i think that there's also something to be said for movement for, through dance through those sorts of things there's there is something there where if you find it hard to meditate 
if you find it hard to still your mind in that way, that, that most of your meditative energy might come through dreams or something, then it may be dance, movement, physical activity, exercise, things like that may get you into the zone. There's something that actually connects to your inner knowing that I think comes from these two sources, and that's part of what lets the pure energy in and helps you discern. So, Pile 4, I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you know what this is about, I'd be fascinated to hear about it in the comments. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings.